Now, Mr. Parker, you may go ahead. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I trust that we are all doing well. I trust also that you are, of course, you know, into the active business of production. And that as we have this conversation this afternoon, that you, of course, will be edified by it. I must say good afternoon to one and all. Welcome. Feel free to drop us your questions, your suggestions um, in the chat. Of course, you know, just to open your mic, raise your hands, and then let's have this, of course, conversation. The topic this afternoon is that of fungal control strategy. We'll be looking at several measures, issues, um, some common practices that we ought to be doing, or I might may, may I say best practices that we ought to be fully engaged in, while at the same time, of course, pointing to solutions that we at Carbon Chemical here offer via our, our fungicide. So the overall idea is that we are talking about, of course, fungicides, and these are pesticides, the broad term here meaning to control or to kill um, various pathogens. In this case, we're talking about um, fungus and the fungal spores. And while we're talking about this, we wanted to understand clearly that we are either preventing what we call sporulation or the continued growth, or to prevent what we call the mitochondrial growth from taking place. So we want to, of course, suspend the continued growth and again to prevent sporulation or spreading as well from occurring throughout the field. Again, might I point out to you at this time that the overall idea is to be using um, both curative as well as preventative. And again, we want to implore at this point that we will be utilizing our integrated pest management strategy you know, because this, of course, plays a direct impact in, in, of course, what we are doing. So, you know, feel free, of course, to share the, the, your points and, and, and join in the conversation. Now, bear in mind that the issues around us are, 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 are prevailing conditions that we must bear in mind. And so as you look at this triangle, I want you to understand fully what I'm referring to that the environmental conditions themselves, be it your temperature, your humidity, nutrition, yes, um, a watering situations, and how you go about carrying out your day-to-day -day routine farm practice, give rise and can allow for these pathogens or, or these issues to show up on your farm, depending on your crop type, as well as your crop rotation, so your cultural practices can of course predispose you know, and cause issues to show up on your farm as well. So again, we are the first set of scientists who want to be in the position where we are managing the physical space and we're also managing the different crops that we're putting in and we're also managing, of course, how we also handle our crops after we harvest them because that too is an issue you want to, of course, pay, pay keen attention to. So as mentioned, the conditions are there. Um, these being environmental, um, just going to ask if you want to join in the discourse, you, you use a raise hand feature while we are continuing. I'm, I'm not sure if everybody's hearing me, so just um, accordingly, we will join, um, join in the conversation accordingly. So as pointed out, the, the, converse, the, 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 the conditions themselves can lead to and lend itself to a predisposing situation where like now in Manchester here, where I'm, we're having warmer days, cooler nights, those will favor the conditions of fungal issues to show up. Or you just have a high humidity in perhaps a protected structure. Again, enough ventilation is not occurring, there's enough air movement that can lead to issues as well. So humidity, your pH, your water, your moisture. Now, once you have the introduction now of the organism that is going to be causing that problem there and then no that is what leads to the, the spread um the sporulation and of course that fungal attack on the healthy plant or the healthy fruit and then of course you experience those losses while harvesting too there are issues where the employers the farmhands are just picking the fruits 
and bruising can occur. They are thrown into crates. Again, to bruising can occur. You open lesions or wounds. And so therein now lies to those mechanical issues showing up. And again, you have um, losses. So it can occur both in field as well as in your post-harvest situations. So bear that in mind. It makes no sense you grow a good crop and at the end of it all, you lose everything. So what are the strategies now we're going to be looking at? It's a long-term approach of management that seeks to look at all the variables that are involved, be it your tools, your individuals harvesting, um, the different products that you use on farm, the different crops and how you rotate them. The idea and the major emphasis is on prevention as well as reduction. So while we can't prevent it, we want to reduce the issues, at the same time reduce all of the stress conditions out there for the plant itself. Again, to another emphasis on the resilience, building that strong plant so you can have that continued harvest and yield, despite even if the situation shows up. We've seen cases where um, the field, we see anthracnose coming through, but at the same time, those pepper plants can hold out, they can resist while you know you get that continuation in harvest we've seen instances where we have um bacterial leaf spot and, and sweet peppers but only on a few plants you don't get this complete wipe out and spread throughout the field so things like those you look for again to the addition of your wetting agents your adjuvant your spreader stickers along your, or your penetrants along with your your programs that you're involved in to give that um that, that plant the ability to overcome and two i want to emphasize too that in building your plants resilience you look at products like such as your saita and your 45 and your green stem and what do these have in common might i ask you know that's the question of the day i want to pose to my listening audience what are the benefits of using a, a green stem or a 45 or a saita in my product my crop production um, activities and again I might just very well answer the question so if we are paying keen attention again you will see the answers coming through as we continue in conversation now carbon chemicals has a wide range of fungicide products again too we have our acrobat or bellis carbenism mancozeb we have carigold we also have solcox toxin as well as regnum and zampro and these are pretty much broad based they cover in 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 terms of classification a wide array different active ingredients so you can rotate safely without finding yourself with any issues coming across where you want to control a particular pathogen but you're not able to do so but our portfolio gives you that wide cross section of um of active ingredients so you can rotate safely through various groups. Now, one of the first and foremost strategy that everybody might find themselves with now coming through again is, is a phytophthora or your pythium or you know the kind of physium kind of is a soil, soil borne um pathogens showing up now. And why is it so? You're coming from a warmer conditions into your rainy periods or you're just having that high degree of moisture and then um, warmer days in the night. In, 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 so you find that the issue can show because once it gets to a certain temperature, um, 47, 37 degrees centigrade, those organisms in your soil can reproduce actively and reproduce quite well. And so on the preventative side, as early as from your seedlings, you can see these issues coming off. We talk about issues like a dumping off here, you know, your root rot. Those are the things that I'm referring to here. We'll talk about the fight after strategy. You will see them occurring as early as from your nursery operations. So be on the lookout for that. So in nursery, you can apply your saida along with these fungicides of choice. You have your acrobat, you have your zampro, you have your carbendazim. You also have tops in that you can rotate through. Again, too, if you are seeing the issue coming up, then you, you're on the back foot now, farmers, and I don't want to be on the situation. So from a nursery condition, speak to your nursery operator, or if you are the grower, you know, go through, use your site. It contains your phosphonates, which are going to be helping to build that plant structure, build that plant system. You can also include, of course, your 
your car, your your your, your car benzene or your Zambro as your fungicide based on a, on a weekly or fortnightly application until you're through with your your seedling production. The, on the other side, of course, toxin can be added. You can of course feel free to as well utilize products such as your fortify or your carbendazine, fortify or your green sim rather. And these are building the plant's immunity. Again, no, giving that plant the ability to withstand environmental conditions as well as any external shocks that might occur. Should you need to go curative as well as, um, you know, to stop the issue, then again, your Zampro and your Saita via drenching in soil, as I mentioned to you, can be applied. Um, two applications is sufficient to, of course, shut down these um, issues from occurring. And I might just suggest to you at this point in time that you could, of course, open another screen, go on our YouTube channel where you'll see, of course, you would have done um, significant field work in controlling phytophthora, in controlling other issues within um, the different conditions, be it um, sweet pepper, sorrel, tomatoes, or etc. So you just go in our um, Scar Chem Jam on our YouTube channel, and of course, you just add there your phytophthora or your pythium, and you'll see those issues showing up. And you'll also see, of course, how we um, protected plants and, and the root structures and, and um, prevent, of course, the issues from going forward. So the other approach is to use a Saita plus your evergreen and your carbendazim. This gives you, again, to added protection, added benefit of stimulating, not just controlling those hard to control um, issues, but while at the same time stimulating your soil giving the plant the ability to continue to grow and develop. Again, you can apply these both as drench and as well as on foliar. Now, in your sweet yam, your tomatoes, and sometimes your papaya, you see anthracnose coming up, be it in post-harvest situations or during your crop. Again, a part of the overall strategy is to be on the preventative or the curative side. I prefer to be on that curative side so we know crops like your sweet yam and your sweet peppers and, and your papaya will have these issues showing up. We have a wider array too that you can rotate through. So for my sweet yam farmers who have tuned in, you have topsin, you have your bellies, you also have your regnum that you can rotate deeply enough through that will give you that added protection. If you go the route of using, say, a regnum, topsin, carbendazim, the regnum will kick in that excellence effect or if you use bellies, you'll get the excellence effect, which of course will lessen your application while giving you that bumper crop at the end of the crop cycle. Again, farmers, the idea here is prevent further spore relation or spore formation as well as spread. So as you see the issues coming up, you want to stop it where it is and then you know, be on, on the lookout for that continued spread, but stop it where it is and then build the plant's resilience and immune system that's on the curative side. If you're on the preventative side, then what we recommend is to be applying the fungicide program along with your saita or your, your carbendazim, sorry, your saita or your green stem or your fortify. Again, the, the phosphites and the phosphonates building the plant's ability to overcome and to withstand. And just to show you, in terms of being utilizing regnum in field in terms of sweet yam here's a situation where the farmer would have been using his protocol and we are using ours so if you know the treated air with regnum you're not seeing uh one or two leaves only perhaps with the issue and this is because there's no further spore development so there's no further spread you can of course use this product also in a dip should you should you require or if you're not aware of where those heads are coming from. On the control side, as you can note, the issue is spreading and it's going all the way up to the, to the upper leaves. And then what you'll eventually have is a mass defoliation. And then of course the plant will become underproductive and you're not able to get a, a significant harvest from that. Another major issue that we normally see in field is that downy mildew. And downy mildew, of course, affects your curcubits, 
So be it your watermelon, your cucumbers, your pumpkins, you'll see this is a popping up in, in field. Um, farmers who, who grow these crops in your southern parts of St. in St. Elizabeth, you know, Manchester and, and in, on the plains will tell you that once the field shows up with downy mildew, then, you know, you're on the back foot. But I want to tell those farmers that they can rest at ease knowing that the issue, of course, can be sufficiently controlled and suppressed. And how do you do this? One, you can do, of course, you ensure that you go cultural, look at your planting distance, look at how quickly that field closes, and ensure that you have um, proper air movement and the field is drying out. So location can be an issue. How and the time of year and where you're putting that plant, if you have shading and so on, you know, consider. But on the other side of the equation, you'll see a situation where with the use of your acrobat or your example in conjunction with a saita or a green stem or a fortify gives you the added benefit of protection. And again, if you know it carefully, this field, little to no down the mildew present, um, just a few small lesions, but with the use of acrobat, with the use of example, you're able to shut down those fungal spores and they don't spread any further. Whereas in the control side of the situation, you are seeing again too, the issue popping up where you have um, the lesions present and then the spores are going to be present also, and it's gonna to continue to spread throughout the field. Again, if you notice this area, open sun can dry too, as opposed to you have instances of shade in the control area. You know, these are things that you watch out for when you put your, your curcubits, you want them in a wide open space where air movement can, of course, be achieved, while at the same time incorporating your Zampro or your Acrobat or even your bellies in your spray program to give you that added control. In crops such as your cantaloupe, again, you can see the same age, same field. However, what we did was to do a half and half just to demonstrate to the farmer that even though the conditions are present, you can shut down that fungus wood. Whereas in a control area, the farmer is of course using his continued um, approach or regime. And of course, what would have occurred is that the fungal spores would have spread further throughout the field. And of course, giving rise to a reduction in overall yield and a reduction in his profit potential. So, be it that the conditions are present, so the spores are in field or you're seeing the symptoms, you can, of course, trust that we would have done enough research, enough work with Zampro to see that it can shut down and control the issue. Whereas if it hasn't started, you can, of course, continue your production. Even your watermelon, issues such as your gummy stem blight and your downy mildew will show up, especially too. And remember, I said it earlier, farmers, weed pressure along with spacing can impact your production. It's rubbing the plant for your sunlight, for nutrients, for water, and for air. And so because the extra grasses are present, you can see the fungus growth developing, but this farmer would have gone through and used up his sample. And of course, would have been able to shut down that fungus growth from continuing spreading throughout the field. And so it's localized, it's not gonna be going any further. Even in your seed peppers, same thing, same strategy. Engage in an early and a preventative approach. So you control your downy mildew, you can control all of the issues from early in your seed peppers as well by utilizing your acrobat and your zambro in rotation. Here's another common situation that can always come up too, where you have your bacterial leaf spot. And this again is a situation where in your sweet peppers, a very, very common situation, even now as we get into the rainy period. Why? The extra moisture that is present in the atmosphere. Now, what we did was to showcase here to the, to the farmer that you can use soil cocks, but you can use it wisely. And here is how you start the early stages of your crop. That copper will help to coat that leaf and toughen that leaf structure so you'll get a reduction in the possibility of the spores forming 
or you're seeing the issues growing in it. So there's no bacterial lesions or anything showing in the situation. When you're in production, the other side of the equation, so that's preventative and that's before flooring. You use got one to one and a half tablespoon per gallon of water, and this can give you sufficient coverage and protection. It's a copper-based fungicide. So a lot of farmers will say, but after we start fruiting and bearing Sir Parker, what's going to happen? We normally recommend that you go in, but at a lower rate. So here's where I did some field work with the same product in field, showing that at a lower rate, you can control your bacterial leaf spot without causing any injury or aborting your blossoms um, by going in at one teaspoon per gallon of water. The presence of the copper, of course, gives you that added protection and it gives you that shutdown or lockdown of the spores um, should you have that problem. I see there's a question in the chat here. Um, this person is in Manchester. Can you let us know where we are joining? Okay, so you're in Chantilly. All right, good to have you, Ms. Wella Wilson from Chantilly here in Manchester. So here, if you're using, um, if you're in your flooring period, be it your strawberries, your, your tomatoes, or your sea peppers, the recommendation is to go in at the extremely low rate of one teaspoon per gallon. And you'll, of course, get um, both that, that, that curative action. So we saw where the leaves dried off and we didn't have further issues in field. So this is what we saw when we went in. These were the issues you can see the tag there. The, the plant, the farmer was of course impacted severely. A lot of defoliation was taking place. And so with the presence and the use of the, 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 the soil cocks at a low rate, you'll get that significant reduction in that leaf fall while at the same time, again, now reducing that, um, that bacterial leaf spot present. Now, this again is another issue for my cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower farmers. And you're seeing issues where you have what is known as bacterial soft rot, or some, some people call it black rot, or some people indicate that the, the, the cabbage jump off a stump, or you're seeing just these lesions present and at maturity when you cut that cabbage or when you, the cabbage is harvested you're seeing the crown rot showing up throughout the crop and again the recommendation and suggestion here is that early crop you can of course use your copper um, in the presence of copper most bacteria bacterial issues and fungal issues are nullified just bear in mind that if it's a flowering crop you can go at a higher rate you'll have to go at one teaspoon per gallon. However, for crops such as your cabbage, um, your cauliflower, your broccoli, you can of course use it at your 15 to 20 grams per gallon of water. Added to that too, you can build the plant's immune system, build the plant's resilience by using your, your saita. You can of course use your green stem and of course your fortify in combination with your Solcox, as well as your Zampo or your Acrobat. So those are some of the issues that you will see showing up here, Ms. Williams. Um, and I see Ms. Palmer here from Topsham District in Medstone. Thanks for joining this afternoon. Um, even in your crops, such as your, you know, your Irish potato, these products can be utilized and rotated throughout them because again, you have your early blight, you have your late blight. You also have your, what some people call or refer to as black leg. These again are issues where the bacterial rot is affecting it in, 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 in Irish potato that is. In your nurse, we refer to it as damping off or you're seeing phytophthora issues. So the strategies are, are pretty much easy to follow easy to utilize and again can prove to be very effective in control of the different issues that can come up. Other methods include finding resistant varieties or utilizing our crop rotation systems. So where you're planting your Irish potato this season, 
go through, put some, um, preferably not another root crop. So you could do some string beans, some, some cabbages, um, turnips perhaps, and then come back through in the next cycle with your crop. So you're giving enough space in between them. Um, so you want to ensure that what, 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 why I'm saying your crop rotation here and now is should a lot of times when we harvest the crop residue remains in field, sometimes we plow them in. Um, the issue here and now is that the pathogen can be on those leaves and you're plowing in the leaves. And again, what you have now, the situation where the, 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 the problem is now in soil. And again, you're seeing a situation where you have continued um, spread because it's in the soil. The fungal pathogens are remaining in soil. So you want to be on the lookout for that. And again, bear that in mind as you continue your production. So do your crop rotation and of course, continue. Now, we have some upcoming events that I'd like to share with our farmers. We'll be doing um, a crop, a farmer training in cabbage crop care, and this is going to be in Davis Town. This is in Cascade. Um, this is going to be at Cascade St. Anne, and it's going to be on Monday the 18th, and this is at 3 p.m. And Ron Lewis will be agronomist on site. Also in Coley, and that's going to be in St. Anne on the 19th. Ron Lewis will be presenting there as well. We'll be talking about our elixir fertilizer fertilizers and it's going to be in need and pen this is in st thomas and this is on monday the 18th at 10 a.m and jeremy and francis will be there um, we'll have an elixir field there it's going to be in neath mountain and this is in st elizabeth um, this is where Derv at derval walters farm and this is going to be on tuesday the 26th at 10 a.m c and spence will be your agronomist and at the same time peanut production and this is going to be a lovely point um this is glen up and this is um in front of um this is um uh, george's field or george's garage saint elizabeth and this is going to be on the 28th with Sion spence and again next week thursday we will also be having our onion training session on the 21st and this will be in swansea um for all the onion farmers you can of course turn out for that and of course, look at how we do our stale bed technique, um, the different seeding densities, planting regimes for next week, Thursday, starting at 10 a.m. I see that there are questions in the chat or those persons. So use some beans or peanut to boost the nitrogen as your crop rotation. This is excellent, excellent response here. Definitely so. So in practicing your crop rotation, here is the benefit. When you add your beans and your peas, it boosts the nitrogen. Um, it's gonna help with your nitrogen fixation. It's gonna help with your uh, microbial population, which is giving you the added benefit of um, nitrogen being present in your soil. So again, simple strategy. We have a guide for pumping production. Um, yes, we do, Alicia. Um, we can, of course, share this with you. What you could do, um, Georgia, please advise your according for me where the pumpkin guide is concerned. Um, I believe you'll share your contact details and we'll send it to you via WhatsApp. Um, for the WhatsApp number, it's 876-401-4766. I believe it's at the top of the chat. So that's 876-401-4766. Can us drop our line and then we'll respond by sharing it accordingly. Okay, there you go. So the WhatsApp number would have been shared accordingly. So feel free. So are there any questions at this time? I, I You must be burning with questions. Um, okay, so I'll show you. So can soil cracks be used on flowers for leaf spot? All right, so again, if, if they are in, if is this rose in particular or any other plant? If they are soft leaf uh, plants, then bear in mind, Ms. Palmer, that you want to go at the, at the low rate. While if they're in flooring or about to floor, you go at a low rate as well. Feel free also to use topsin for your ornamentals, carbendazim as well. Those work quite well. Um, they are pretty broad spectrum and can, of course, cover those issues. But soil cracks can be used, but go at a low rate. Um, also, they are in pots. Okay. So 
go at the low rate, which is one teaspoon per gallon um, for the benefit of all persons. If you can acquire for yourself those small plastic baking sets, or if you come to anyone for training sessions, we normally give out the small measuring cups, so you can, of course, keep one of those along with your in your pesticide storage area where you can, of course, use them accordingly to get your accurate measurements. So, again, I want to ask my question, Georgia, at this time, if I'm allowed. Are there any other questions from the chat? Did I miss any? Uh, let me just check here to see. Um, Okay, no. Okay, I would have answered those questions accordingly. Um, any other questions that you want to share? You can, of course, feel free to open your mic and ask a question at this time. If not, then I will share the question for today's giveaway. And again, this lucky participant will be winning for themselves a lovely item from Caribbean Chemicals. It's one of the newer products on the market. It's called Evergreen. And Evergreen is a biostimulant along with nutritional product along with, um, it's an excellent product, you know, gives the plant an overall growth and development. So feel free to drop us your, quest, your response to the question in the chat. Um, you can share it directly via our WhatsApp line or directly in this chat. Um, George and Stephanie, I believe, are monitoring accordingly, whether it be YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. Here you go to the question. Name two. Let me just check what's in the chat here before I ask the question. When is the best time to apply Saita? Okay, excellent question, Alisa. Now, Saita, of course, is applied, can be applied throughout the life cycle of the plant. Um, depending on what you're trying to achieve, let's say you want to increase your root development because Saita contains 41% calcium and 40% phosphorus. And so what you're getting is adequate root development, adequate, adequate um, you know, cell wall development. So in the young stage, you can apply it. If you want to do it as, you, as the crop grows, you can add it in addition to your biostimulant or your fungicide program to give that extended coverage and protection. The calcium, of course, will help to increase the weight of that, of that um, potato, that, sorry, pumpkin rather, I don't know where potato, um, increase the weight of your potato, the pumpkin, to give you that um, excellent market quality and value. So I, I trust that answers your question. Um, I'm Dave. Yes, Georgia, go ahead. Uh, two questions on YouTube. What can I use to control powder mildew? And the second question is unrelated to the current training, but have you ever seen anyone so occurring trees, then transplant it yet? What size tree best to use for that? All right. For the okra, because the plant is a taproot and because of the nature of the vegetable, people tend to not just go, they tend to just go directly in soil. If you're going to go in trees, 50 cell trees, the long ones, the deeper ones would have been ideal, 50 cell trees. So it's not ideal. Um, for powdery mildew, the general approach is to use your topsin, carbendazim, as well as trifmine. So those are the products that you use directly to control the powdery mildew on. Um, and bear in mind, don't mix up. Let me just put this out for general information here. Let me just go back to the slide that had in the wrong direction. The slide that had your downy mildew presentation on it. Now, note carefully that the lesions for your downy mildew are usually yellow, um, hexagonal, or they take up the entire space where the veins are. So you get an intervenal um, yellowing. If it is powder mildew, it's literally you're going to see a white in color and usually on top, on the surface of the leaf itself, so the upper surface. If it's down in mildew, when you turn over those leaves, you see the spores on the underside looking slightly white, yellowish. So that's a major difference. So let's not don't, don't confuse them. There are two separate um, organisms that cause um, this issue. So for the question of the day, I I didn't I would have shared two or three products rather that improves the 
overall movement of the product, of, of your fungicides, and at the same time, builds the plant immune system. Name any two of those three products that are identified. So name two of the three products are identified that are used to build the plant's immune system and improve on the fungicide efficacy. I see your answer here. I see Julian, is this Julie um, from, and the answer there being Saita and Evergreen. I see Patricia Palmer here again to saying Acrobat and Zampro, and Tanisha Newell saying Saita and Evergreen. Um, something is missing from one of the answers. I won't say who is right and who is, who is partially right and who is right. So bear in mind that you're improving the plants overall vigor while helping the plant to build its stress tolerance. Are there any responses on YouTube, Georgia, at this time? No, not seeing any. Not oh, yeah, Saita 45, Saita and Bias stem, green stem and 45. Okay, I wonder who came, who got the answer first, Which, whose response came in first? Saita 45. Okay, so the correct answer would have been from either three. So we talk about Saita, green stem, or 45. So the first. So then person. the yes. first person would have been John Lee East, Saita, and green stem. Exactly, yes, that's, that's, that's what I was, I was and about to say. She's on Zoom, so she can send me her number in the WhatsApp. Okay, wonderful. So remember the WhatsApp number 876 401 4766. So congratulations to our winner this afternoon. So to build your plant's immune system, to build its resilience, we use a Saita or green steam or fortify. Um, so again, to well try to the other persons who mentioned um, evergreen and the Saita that was pretty, pretty close. Um, so congratulations again. And thank you for participating in this afternoon's session. Um, any other closing thoughts or comments, Georgia, as we? No, that's a wrap. Okay. All right, so thank you for passing through. I did enjoy the conversation and the chat. Um, bear in mind that we, of course, keep looking out for us. Uh, this tomorrow morning will be on Power 106 as we have further conversation in agriculture and as well as our different in-field farmer training session. Um, let us know if you have a farmer group or farmer our, our needs within that group, and we can, of course, reach out to us to, so we can help accordingly. Thank you for having us, and have yourselves a productive day. Um.